Right. It says this, And of Levi he said, Let thy thummim and thy urim be with the holy ones. Now, when it says, And of Levi he said, Let the thummim and urim be with thy holy one, because Levi were the priests of the nation of Israel. Aaron, Moses' brother, and his sons became the high priests of the nation. The high priests who were Eleazar, Eleazar's son, which was Moses' uh, brother, his sons became the successive high priests. So the Levites, certain groups of the Levites, you had high priests, you had priests, and you had certain sections of the Levites. Now the sons of Eleazar were the ones that wore the Thummim and the Urim. Now the Thummim and the Urim were like balls that g gave up illumination, with something like crystal balls. And the Mosai would speak uh, to the priests and he would show them certain events that would take place which concern the nation and concern the priests. Now, and it says, and of Levi he said, let the thumbing and you and thy urine be with thy holy one, which was his priests. Now the holy one that's not that's dwelling with our people now is not the righteous spirit of the Mosai. What they're dealing with is the witchcraft and with Satan. Because like I said, the Haitians were the priests of the nations. And it says, it says, let the thumbing and thy urine be with thy holy one, whom thou didst prove at Massa. So who was at Massa with Moses? It was the Levites and the rest of the Israelites that provoked Moses and the priests that were Moses at, at Massa. Because Moses struck the rock to give them water. And it's just going to explain for him. With whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. So this part when he's talking about the Thurman and the Urim is that you know that the priests used the Thurman and Urim which were like crystal balls that gave off a certain illumination to let the priests know what the Most High was going to relate to his high priest and so forth. And it says the ninth verse, read on. Who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren. So this is speaking about Levi. When, when it came to pass, when uh, it was asked, uh, when Joseph was so in Egypt, it was asked of Levi, where was his brother? And Levi said, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren. Now, when you look at it today, the Haitians today don't acknowledge the so-called black Americans or the West Indians. They merely keep to themselves, amongst themselves. They don't associate. And they will speak to you, but the close, far as dealing association is many among their own people. They do not acknowledge their brethren. Continue on. Right. One more thing, one more aspect to that. When it says, uh, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did acknowledge all his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word. Goes back to Exodus 32 also when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, okay, and the children of Israel were in all manner of wickedness and fornication. And the Most High said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come here. And the Levites came to Moses. And he said, Every, let it, every Levite take his sword and slay the wicked of Israel. And they, it says the Levites didn't care if it was their mother, their father, <laughs> or their children. They just slaughtered them, put them to death. Okay, so I'm going to read on now in verse 10. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments, and Israel thy law. Right, so that was the job of the Levites, to teach the law. They were the law givers of the law also, to teach Israel the laws of the Most High, the, and so forth. That was the job of the priests, to do the sacrificing, to burn the incense in the temple, and it goes on and on. That was their job, to do the service of the Most High strictly. Read on. They shall put incense before thee, and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. So their job was to burn the incense, right? The incense in the, in the temple, sacrifice the animals for the sins of the people and for themselves, and for the atonement of the sins of the entire nation. Uh, continue, and it says, uh, read on. So we have to go to Malachi. Right. Malachi, what chapter? We're going to go to Malachi chapter 2, and what we're going to read is verses 1, 3, 8 and 9, so we can just get through it briefly. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Okay, let me jump to verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. Now, this happened to the, the Levites. When this happened? When we were brought here in slavery, the, the uh, Haitians. Why? There are no more priests to the Mosai because what are they dealing with now? Witchcraft, evil, all sorts of evil and madness, as, a, as an entire nation, I should put it, we're dealing with wickedness and evil. So now, instead of doing righteousness, as doing the uh, burning the incense and the righteous or of the Most High, we're doing the evil sacrifices. Read on. Right, let me show them a, a, a photo of that from this book here. 
Okay, it shows them practicing their voodoo and spreading dung upon their faces. So this was, it was prophetic, all right? So, let me read on. Even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Okay, so now let's jump down to verses 8 and 9. And now the solemn feast that they're keeping in Haiti and those islands is Eastern what? Eastern Christmas. Some of them do, if they're in the Roman Catholic Church. They either celebrate all the pagan customs of the Roman Catholic Church. That's the solemn feast that they're keeping. Right. Verse 8. But ye are departed out of the way. See? So the whole nation, but this was referring particularly to the Levites, the priests. They have went out of the Most High's way, which is his righteous order. Continue on. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's what they did. They corrupted the covenant by doing what? Bringing in false uh, sacrifices, by going to pagan customs, by following the ways of the different nations, the Africans. Continue on. Verse 9. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people. And look at it. Haiti is the <laughs> poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. It's okay. the poorest and they're living in the most deplorable state. Continue on. According as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Right. Let me say this about right. that. When the Mosai said he made Levi contemptible and base before all the people, meaning before all Israel. When you mistakenly ask, a, if you ask a black guy, are you Haitian? You know how insulted they get. Haitian? I ain't no Haitian. If you ask any of our people, they get ins that's like the greatest insult to call them a Haitian because they've been reduced to being contemptible and base yes. before all the people. Like in what many Dominicans, the biggest joke that they, uh, one of their jokes is to call another person, they say, do I own Haitiano, meaning you are a Haitian. And they all think, ah, ha, ha, that's like a joke to them because they consider the, the Levites, which are the Haitians, the most base of all right. people. And at one time, they were the most noblest of all. The priests, the Haitian priests, were noble men. The most I tells you how how has a fine gold become dim? The priests were royal men. The priests that were purity, all pure stuff. None was unclean or base could come around the priests. Not even a stranger could touch the food that belongs to the priests. Everything around the priests had to be pure, sanctified, and holy. The priests could not even have a woman that had a husband before. She had to have been a virgin. So it's showing that the high level that we were on, were once on to the level that we have been brought down to. Right. So now let's go back to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 11 to finish up on uh, Levi. It says, Bless the Lord, bless Lord his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him. So what was this? This was also prophecy showing you who was going to rise up against the Haitians like the French. The most I was going to give them that power to fight against their enemies. Read it on. And of them that hate him, that they rise not again. I like to show you in this book called Slavery. It's on page uh, 119 in the caption. It says, Refuse freedom by the French National Assembly. So the French National Assembly wanted to give the, uh, the Haitians freedom under their way of doing it. But the Haitians rebelled against that. They said, Haiti's slaves revolted in August 1791, burning down plantations and massacring whites. They massacred white people. And it says, Toussaint organized the slaves into a revolutionary army that could defeat the European troops. So this is also going back to this prophecy in this chapter, right, in this verse right here, about the Haitians. Right, and that's going to go on a greater scale in these last days. The Most High is going to destroy everyone that comes up against them that they rise not again. Because the white man's not going to rise again, according to this prophecy. Ever! Ever! Next tribe is Judah, who is known today as the so-called black Americans, or some people say Afro-Americans. But these are not your names, or Negroes, which you all make mockery of my Negroes. So, so you prefer, some people prefer the term Afro-Americans. But the true nationality is Judah. Right. right? Can, can we just get, since you said that, in Deuteronomy 20, I just got to get to since Benjamin brought that up. Deuteronomy 28 and 37, it says this. This is mainly for Judah. Listen. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall send thee. 
Because as he said, you call colored, some of you call yourself Afro-American, African-American, blacks American, or Nubians now. So that's what it means being called a byword, a proverb and a byword. Like there was a, a, a famous proverb, any meeny miny mo, catch a nigga by the toe, if he holler, let him go, any meeny miny mo. Okay, so then you got all these bywords. You call every 10 years, the American, what's termed American black, changes their nationality. So that's Bible prophecy on the tribe of Judah. So now, let's go to Genesis 49 and verse 8. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now it says, Judah, particularly speaking of the so-called black Americans. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Meaning, the rest of the tribes is going to acknowledge Judah for bringing forth the truth and teaching and showing that we are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Continuing. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Now when it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies, is referring to the so-called black Americans are situated in the most prominent situation of all the tribes, in the top leading position where they have the advantage to take hold of this system and bring this man down. So actually, their hand is up in the neck of the so-called white man's system, whether it's his political system, his military system, his economical system. They're up in the top elite of the system where they have the position more advantage, uh, more advantage of the system than the rest of the tribes of Israel. So that's what it's talking about. When you look around, you see for yourself in the politics, in the, in, in, uh, in the Congress, in the sports world, in the entertainment world, in the economical field, you have a lot of black, so-called black Americans in that position because that's the prophecy that will, be fit in, that will fit Judah. Continue on. Right. Let me say this, yeah. add this one thing. Also, when it says the neck of the enemy, letting you know that Judah would be located primarily in North America. The top kingdom. The top kingdom. Okay, so let me read on. It says, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Right, so their father's children, which is the rest of the tribes, is going to acknowledge and see that Judah is the head tribe that the Most High set up. That's the tribe the Most High set up to be the head and to show Israel and to guide and teach Israel. Continue on. And to prove that statement, briefly, let's go to Zechariah 12 and 7. It says, The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Okay, so the Most High is let, letting, the, the prophecy is letting us know that Judah would be exalted first. And Judah would be the top tribe who would give the knowledge to the rest of the tribes. So that way the other tribes would not exalt themselves against Judah. Because right now in this system, the tribes seem to be against Judah. They're always putting the tribe of Judah down. Oh, those blacks don't like to work. Oh, they're lazy. They're Yankee they're boys. They're, they're on welfare. welfare. They ain't this, they ain't that. They've been here so long, and they haven't achieved nothing. Right. So the most is letting, through prophecy, letting us know that Judah would be lifted up first, and Judah would be the one to gather the tribes, to spread the knowledge out. Okay? So let's go back to Genesis 49. And the ninth verse. Ninth verse. Judah is a lion's whelp. So the most has given the characteristics of Judah. Judah is a lion's whelp, a young, frisky, courageous lion. Judah was like this back in the 60s when they started standing up for, uh, for the civil rights, for uh, black power, the black movement, and the different black groups, the Black Panthers, the Freedom Fighters, and, and going on. Continue. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. So from the prey, my son, the prey is the Bible, the knowledge of the Bible. Judah has gone away from the truth of the Bible, teaching that they're the Israelites, and they have gone into what? More into the political system. They have gone more into Africanism, Egyptology, and all the different uh, philosophies of this system and of the different nations. Read on. He stooped down. Now, when it said he stooped down, like a lion, when he stoops and he's getting prepared, read on. He couched as a lion. So he couched as a lion, so he was getting ready to prance and attack the enemy. When was this done? In the 60s, under the different Black Panthers, SNCC, when it was about the revolutionary against the white man oppressing them in the different uh, riots and so forth. All this was a time when, in the 60s, when the blacks here in America was rebelling against the system because of the oppression against their people. Read on. And as an old lion. So that as an old lion, now, now in the 90s, now he's more comfortable, he's 
talking about the political, it's more of an economical trend than more of a revolutionary trend. Read on. So now he's more of a, in a complacent state. Read on. Right. So let me say this. <laughs> so back then, it looked like the American blacks of tribe of Judah was going to take down their enemy like a lion does. Right. He waiting. Right? Crouched like he was going to attack. But then that what did they do? They went, hmm. Just rolled over. After King died. And went to sleep and got into politics and all this other man. Y'all just went to sleep. So when the blacks in America went to sleep, they, they didn't just go to sleep on their own. Let's stress this point real good. This was a diabolical, demonic plot right. by the Illuminati, the FBI, the CIA, and the politicians to deliberately and conspiratorially destroy the blacks in America by using what? Drugs. By using infiltration. The, uh, the, coal, uh, the FBI, money, bribery using different black groups to fight against themselves to infiltrate and destroy black organization. So let you know, they didn't just fall asleep. This was a systematically set up to destroy the black organization. So after all the, the destruction of the blacks, Martin Luther King dying and all the groups fell apart by uh, infiltration and bribery and all different tactics, then Jake fell asleep. Now when it came to the 90s now, they have become more complacent. It's all about economical gain, political gain. It's no more about revolution against the system. So continue. Who shall rouse him up? So who's going to rouse him up? The Most High by using Christ. And thirdly, by the prophecies and the events taking place in the Bible. All the world events that's taking place around America and throughout the world. Continue. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. And it said the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter is a royal staff used by kings. So the rulership shall not depart from Judah, read on, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Nor a lawgiver between his feet, meaning the rulership, a leader of the nation, read on, until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh, which represents Jesus Christ the Messiah. So up until the time that Christ came, when the Romans was ruling over Jerusalem, under the leadership of the Sadducees, uh, Pharisees, and the different sects of the Israelites, they had that rulership until it was taken from them, when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D. Read it on. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So unto Christ, which is the leader of the nation of Israel, who also came up in the tribe of Judah, and also unto Judah shall the gathering of the people be. That's going to teach the truth of the Bible, which is going to be passed on to the rest of the tribes of Israel. Read on. Binding his foal unto the vine. Now they're speaking about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. It said, bind his foal unto the vine, Read on. And his ass's colt unto the choice So they're speaking about Christ when he came right into Jerusalem and an ass. This was fulfilled when he did that. Read on. He washed his garments in wine. So showing you that Christ drank so much wine, he washed his garments in wine. Christ drank so much wine. When you read the different scriptures in Matthew 11, 19, also too it tells you uh, many scriptures. In Daniel the 10th chapter, his eyes were a flame of fire. In Revelation, in Daniel, his eyes were, la were last fire. Read on. And his clothes in the blood of grapes. Meaning he drank so much wine. It was as if his clothes were stained in, the, in wine. And also showing the characteristics of the so-called black man. He drinks a lot of wine. Read on. His eyes shall be red with wine. Speaking still about the Messiah. His eyes shall be red with wine. Which was fulfilling when? Matthew's 11th chapter in the 19th verse. Also about the black man too. He drinks a lot of wine. Read on. And his teeth white with milk. And his teeth white with milk. Showing you the characteristics of the black man, his teeth shall be white. Back in slavery, you had a picture called a black sample, where you show a black man's screen and showing his white teeth, his white pearly teeth. All right? Continue on. Deuteronomy 33, chapter. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And this is the blessing of Judah. Why is the blessing? That the Most High was going to set up Judah to bring forth the truth and the knowledge of the Bible showing that we are the Israelites. Read on. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. So he's saying, Hear, Lord, hear the voice of Judah. Hear his prayers when he cries out to you in the affliction, in the time of affliction. Read on. And bring him unto his people. Bring him unto his people, the entire nation of Israel, the West Indians, the Haitians, the Puerto Ricans, the people that are listed on the sign that you see on the camera. Let his hands be sufficient for him. So let his hands be sufficient as far as dealing with this truth, as getting the information that's needed, bringing forth the truth to our people. Read on. And be thou in help to him from his enemies. And be thou in help to him from his enemies. Who is the enemies? The so-called white man and all nations that's here in America. 
So the Most High is protecting us when we go forth to do his work and teach on the streets. Right, so now let's go to the book of Joel, okay? We're going to go to the book of Joel, chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 1, 3, and 6, briefly, okay? Joel, chapter 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. This is a future prophecy. That's the time we're living in. Continue. Verse because Judah and Jerusalem represents the whole nation. We're still in captivity. Read on. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. When was this done? In slavery in the 1600s. Read on. And sold a girl for wine. That was the purpose of sl slave trade. The Africans and the Arabs sold us in slavery and they sold us. And they sold a girl for wine. Read on. That they might drink. And they did drink the wine. Read on. Uh, verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? So the Most High is speaking to who? The Africans. Why? Because they, these people were the original inhabitants of the land of Tyre and Zidon. Continue on, read on. And all the coast of Palestine. And who's joining the coast of Palestine now? The Arabs. That's fighting over the land of Israel. So it's showing you that the, Ar the Africans and the Arabs were involved in the slave trade and selling us to the so-called white man. Read on. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, Swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. So the Most High said, no matter what they do, if they pray to him a hundred thousand times a day, and they say, well, we saw what we did, the Most High said he's not going to forgive them. He's going to return a recompense upon their own heads. No much how much Allah, what by they sing or shout, the Most High is not going to forgive what they have done to his people. Right. Let me say this. When, recompense meaning pay back. Right. The, all the nations were envious over Judah and the other tribes being the chosen of the Most High. So Tyre and Zidane, the Africans, and Palestine, meaning the Arabs, figured, look, we could pay the Most High back for not choosing us. Let's destroy them. Let's put them in slavery. So the Most High said, if you do that, thinking you're paying me back for not choosing you as my chosen people, swiftly and speedily will I return your own payback upon your own head. Okay? So now we're in verse, I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Okay? The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians? Now, this is showing you. It's showing you right here. Who sold us? Is the children of Judah, the so-called black Americans, and the children of Jerusalem, the rest of the tribes of Israel. When it also it said Jerusalem, it also includes Benjamin and Levi, the so-called West Indians and Haitians. It said the children also of Judah and, Jer and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. Why is it saying the Grecians? Because the Greeks was the first ruling empire of the so-called white man. And all white people stem from the Greeks. So it's talking about the so-called white people, Europeans, up until this day, America. Read on. That ye might remove them far from their border. And we were removed far from our border, which is Jerusalem. We were sold from the west coast of Africa, but we migrated down into Africa in the time of 70 AD. And we're going to show you in, in this different historical books called Babylon to Timbuktu. So from the west coast of Africa, we were sold by the Africans and the Arabs to the so-called white man. Right. So from there, let's jump back to Deuteronomy 28, and let's get verse 68 to show you how they removed us far from our border on slave ships. Does the Bible speak about that? Yes, and we're going to prove it. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, with, which, read on. With ships. This was the second time. The first time that we were in Egypt was with uh, Jacob and his 70 souls, and we became a great nation. And we came out of Egypt under Moses. But this second time was after we became a great nation, and we were sold from the west coast of Africa to the Americas. Now, the Mo and Egypt is a Greek word that means bondage, slavery. America also represents Egypt, which is our bondage and our captivity. Now, it says, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, meaning a second time. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Again with ships. and slavery into America a second time. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. So by the way Moses spoke, it was in Mount Sinai. And read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And the there is America. America the islands of the Caribbeans. Read on. For bondmen 
and bond women. And he said, you shall be sold unto your enemies, the so-called white man, the Greeks that we read in Joel, the third chapter. Read on. And no man shall buy you. And the bond man and bond woman is slave man and slave woman. And when it says, no man shall buy you, no man of our people in this captivity was going to redeem us or deliver us out of the hand of the so-called white man. You have many black leaders that try, but they fail. Because who's going to deliver us out of this captivity? Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And when he comes back, it's not going to be with peace and love. It's going to be with war and great destruction. Right. So let's go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. Right. Okay, to prove the color of Judah. Right. Jeremiah 14, verse 2 says, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. So the Bible said Judah is mourning. Mourning for what? For better rights, civil rights, equality, for jobs, for more uh, employment, for uh, against the oppression, against the hatred. For you name it, every aspect Judah is mourning. Read on. And the gates thereof languish. So when it says the gates thereof languish, it means the black leadership of our people is languishing. They're languishing in the sense that they're not teaching our people the truth as to who they really are, the Israelites. What they're teaching up here, they're African Americans, Islam, and all these different uh, false philosophies. But they're not teaching that they're the Israelites, and the so-called white man is a devil, and he's not the Jew, according to the Bible. Right on. And that ties in what Genesis 49 said about them couching as an old lion. Who shall rouse them up? Okay. So that's what also goes into that language. Our leaders are languishing because they don't know what to teach the people. Okay. It says, they are black unto the ground. So it's showing you that Judah is black unto the ground. Meaning what? They are dark-skinned people. The Jews are dark-skinned people, black people. When you dig up the earth, it's different shades of brown, dark color. And we're going to prove it more in the historical books, showing you that the Jews were all black people. All right? Right. And that ground, meaning when he said different shades of brown, because you do have some light-skinned mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, blacks, ranging from a light brown to a very dark brown. Okay, because when you, the top layer of the soil is brownish, then the deeper you go, the darker it gets. Okay. So we had to go to the book, this histor historical book called Babylon to Ting Book 2. Now, this was written by a black scholar. Some of you have said, but why are you using the white man books? We use all books, blacks, white, because it bears reference to the Bible. So we had to go to page 84 and read uh, what this uh, black scholar wrote. Right. And his name is uh, Rudolf Winsor. It says, uh, in the year 65 B.C., the Roman armies under General Pompey, more white people, white, wh the Romans are Italians, white people, that captured Jerusalem. Read on. Captured Jerusalem. In 70 A.D., General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state. Remember that. They put an end to our rulership, our nation, in the land of Israel, not Africa. Read on. With great slaughter. With great slaughter. They were slaughtering, killing us, butchering us. Mass genocide. Read on. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. You hear that? One million Jews fled into Africa. So now, if these Jews are white people, what would be the purpose or the sense of fleeing down to Africa? So showing you these were black people. One million Jews fled down into Africa, like we just read in the book of Deuteronomy 2068. And you were sold from where? From Africa to America. By who? The Africans and the Arabs. Read on. Right. Let me bring this out. And this also proves what you had said earlier about the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh come. Because right after Christ came, the Romans under Vespasian, like we're reading, destroyed Israel, and they lost their power. Okay? I'm going to read on. Fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery, the slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Okay? So, sure, that's the proof right there. The slave markets, slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Now, I can show one more book called Sex and Race. This is by J.R. Rogers, another black historian and scholar. All right, in this book on page 91, he asks a question right here. And this is the question that he, uh, he posed to the readers. It says right in page 91, were the Jews originally Negroes? The answer is yes, and still are. Now, this is what he said about, about the European uh, uh, painters. It says, European painters and sculptors 
by the use of white models to typify biblical characters have falsified tremendously the physiognomy of the ancient Jews. That's true. When was this done? In the Renaissance period. This was done by the Renaissance to typify biblical characters by using white men to portray the biblical characters Moses, uh, Joshua, Jesus Christ, the apostles, and all the people in the Bible. That's why today you have a prominent picture of this guy uh, that we call Jesus Christ, a white-looking guy, which actually his name is Caesar Borgias, the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Now, I have another uh, historical book called Nature Knows No Color Line, again by J.R. Rogers, another black historian. And in this book, on, uh, on certain pages, it's going to tell you, he said the Jews of Spain and Portugal were so dark. And he's going to give the history concerning this matter. Now, this is on page uh, 123 in uh, Sex and uh, Nature Knows No Color Line. And this is what it states in the book. It says right here. It says, White says, an interest, interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess of the of the Abrantes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Show you right there. Now he's going to say it says many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II settled in the West Indies. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Jews and said they were Negroid. So this is the fact right here. These are the facts showing you. So the Bible and history proves the facts that what we're showing, these are the tribes of Israel. In conclusion to the tribe of Judah, I'd like to get one more scripture. Uh, this is Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. So this was Christ speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees and to the nation of Israel, showing that the Roman armies was going to come past Jerusalem. Read on. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Know that the desolation the destruction of us as a nation of people and of our rulership. Read on. Was going to come to an end under the Romans. 